This is what I use to write, so I'm going to use it for this. <laughs> 15 minutes. I want to, this is like the perfect size group to have more what I feel like is a discussion rather than just me yapping about things. Um, but I want to start and I'll just give you kind of a quick kind of intro to how I got into the industry. And of course, I'm vintage now, so everything has definitely changed. But there's a lot of old faces in here. I'm not the only. Um, but I guess I would like to get an idea of is everybody in here currently working in the industry? Like, no. Yeah, so like half and half. Who's working in the industry and making a living working in the industry? Okay, so half and half. Okay, so I'm, um, I'm originally from here, and when I was 16, I ran away to Los Angeles. And, um, you know, it wasn't the red carpet open arms I had dreamed about as a small kid in Folsom, Louisiana. Um, and so I was homeless and I was living in my car and um, I had a camera, I had a Super 8 camera. And for six months, I started filming life living on the street with all of my friends that were also homeless who had come out there from small towns with big dreams. And, um, you know, I was always very, I was raised as an athlete, so I was very competitive, so I never gave up, but it was really, really difficult. And I don't know how, but we managed to make all of that footage into a little short film. And two years after that cut to, because I also, during that time, did extra work which was invaluable to knowing the industry. So, at, you know, when I would do extra work, I would just be like watching how everything on a set ran. And that's how I really got to break into the industry was doing that. But also, after we made that short film, we, you know, nowadays we have crowdfunding, uh, online crowdfunding. Back then, what my friends and I did that were homeless, we would take the old film cans so I made friends with someone at Kodak and then like I would like beg them for recans and short ends and we would take the film cans and we'd go to the Sunset Strip and we would line them up and we would have like little clips of our movies and like literally that was our crowdfunding was like on the street doing that. And it screened, it ended up screen, screening at a small film festival and um, fortunately an executive at MTV saw it and I met him at the festival. And so I went from like homeless to like at 22 directing an MTV show. And um, so it was quite a big like, as you can imagine from being in your car to like all of a sudden, you're like the boss of all these people in this very male dominated network. And so I, you know, I started to do that. My passion was always film, but I felt like TV and reality TV was really, you know, I, I, it was really just starting. It wasn't crazy like it is now. Um, and so I ended up jumping around networks and I did the real world and I did really reality television that was more like documentaries. So I really enjoyed it and I thought it was really feeding the narrative films that I wanted to do as a writer. So whenever I would go on these jobs, so I started like jumping around, I did, the bad shows like The Bachelor and I did like Fear Factor and I did all these shows. But at night when the crew was going out and drinking, I was like in my hotel room, like writing a screenplay because I knew I wanted to be a feature film director. Um, and that I did that for seven years. I worked 15 hour days and then I would go home, go to my home hotel room, which is true write the screenplay, and then I finally had the opportunity in 2009, I made my first feature. And it kind of went on from there. I, I got out of TV and then um, I was living in Los Angeles still. And uh, the tax incentives in Louisiana were starting to really take off. And I, the next film that I made was a $5 million film, which was quite a jump from the 1 million for the first one. Um, and we were like, let's go shoot in New Mexico for the tax incentives. And I was like, wait, New Orleans, like Louisiana, that's where I'm from. I want to go back. Never thought I would, but I thought it was a great idea. So I came back 
and I did, and it was an amazing experience, everything from the tax incentives to the crew, and I never left again. I left Los Angeles, and uh, it was called Waking Madison with Elizabeth Shue, and um, so in between doing that, I would periodically do television, but I found such a really, I loved crowdfunding. Um, I thought it was such an amazing tool to be able to incorporate fans and people who really wanted to be involved with something. So I ended up doing another, like I did a documentary, which we did on Kickstarter for 300000 And that ended up, like Netflix picked that up. And so that's what really I started to focus on was really using crowdfunding and kind of independent investors, like for smaller amounts. Um, being able to do the projects that I wanted to do my way and then selling them to the networks, because I was so burnt out with networks, because they, even with film stuff, I, I did a couple things where studio executives and they just, there's a lot of great ones, but there's also ones that really believe they're artists, but they're not, and they really try to take over your film and it's really like wait that's like my kid like you can't have it um but so yeah so i really found that crowdfunding was like an amazing way to to independently do work and still like get it out there um so yeah that's uh the industry to me breaking into it it's hard because it's kind of like software updates on the iPhone. Like right when I get used to one, they freaking change it. And I'm like, what? I just got used to this, why? And so it's been breaking in, like I have to constantly re-break myself into the industry. I'm even having to do it now because I'm, I'm, do, I'm still doing television because uh, my feature film, COVID, it was supposed to be released and all the theaters shut down. And so then my, it's just a whole mess. So I've had to take some kind of independent gigs. And uh, so my old MTV contacts contacted me and she's like, will you please talk to the VP of programming for MTV News? Because I really want you to come do this thing for three months in New York. And I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds great. And she's like, I want to be transparent here. She's like, I really want to work with you again and just, just really feed him a lot of information on pop culture. And I was like, oh. F-U-C-K, like I am the, I live on a farm in Folsom now. I like do, you know, I live in my bubble. I know nothing of pop culture, but I think that it was a great way of describing what it's like to break in because if you want it, and I, I, I want to go back to Viacom because it's great ways to make connections again, like from 20 years ago, things have changed a lot. So what am I doing? I'm binge watching like, you know, MTV News Live, going to like Entertainment Weekly and like doing the Instagram feeds, learning who this drag queen is, who this person is, who's like, I, I just, so yeah, it's like, I have to break in all over again. So, um, so yeah. So I really want to give any kind of like, advice that I can for people who I'm very passionate about, especially in Louisiana, it's one of the reasons I came back, is helping people who really want to be in the industry but like can't meet the right people or, or don't know how to do it. Um, and I know a lot of you are already in the industry, so I just wanted to say that most of the people that I have hired, aside from working crews, like from going through, I mean, I don't hire people, I'm a director, but I do obviously have the last word with the producers I work with about who comes on on set. But it has been the cold emails that people have sent to me through my website that I have hired green talent the most. So I can't emphasize enough, I mean, for me, 20 years ago, it was cold calling. There was no text messaging, there was no email. But now it's like the paragraph or you know, email that I get of someone genuinely who's talented, who shot a reel on their iPhone and has edited it and sent it to me. Like, those are the people that I hire. And 
I think it's so important, like when they were just talking about the tax incentives and hiring people in Louisiana, it's so important that the people who are already established here bring in that green talent, those hungry, passionate um, kids and people, because that's what makes the industry. So that's what I have to say about that. Questions? Anything? Nothing? Um, yeah, I mean, every, every film that, that I've done, I've, I've written myself. Um, and I've had a lot of people like email me attached PDFs of their scripts asking me like my thoughts. And I would say that's one of the things I love to do the most is like read, you know, fresh scripts and give any kind of notes or, um, and I've, I've written stuff for other people as well, um, and written stuff, obviously, that I haven't even directed. But so, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Do you, do you charge? Do you charge? Do, no, I don't charge. What? No. <laughs> OK, well, I might charge after the third one. <laughs> I mean. I started the line. <laughs> 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 I do want to say that I was fortunate to be one of the actors here in the state that worked with her. She was a director on, I think it came out as Guns for Hire, mm -hmm. but it was a uh, case of Beatles. It had uh, Ever Carradine. Tony uh, Shalhoub. Yeah, Tony Shalhoub, mm -hmm. Orlando Jones, uh, Tony, mm -hmm. uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got to work with her, and she was an amazing director. She came in, and let me tell you, everybody would listen to this woman and would die for this woman because <laughs> the crew would... Yeah, they didn't want to get on our bad side, though. <laughs> you got to make sure that you're there, you do what you got to do. But it was an honor to be able to work for you, and I'll work for you again, and hopefully you work with us. And, and uh, we're glad to see you back. You know, I, here. I'm so glad to be back. And also, like, this is such a great example of the, the balance. Like, when I think of breaking into the industry, I think of a constant balance of hustle and heart. You know, it, it's it's... It's such a hustle, but at the, at the core of it, it's being authentic and, and staying true to like, why do you want to be in this industry? Like what's driving you? And for me, it's always been like, I grew up in such a conservative, uh, very religious, um, you know, just a, an environment that was not conducive to who I was. And I, I looked to anything, I mean, when I was a kid, we had like five TV channels. Mm -hmm. And I never saw myself represented, you know, in that. And so I just want to make, I want to create stories and, and, and make films that represent just, you know, something that's universal and something that like really connects us. So that's the hustle in the heart of like breaking into it. and always knowing that you're always going to be breaking into it because like I just they're doing this did you guys see this so if you that's why I was like you two guys we need to talk because this would be so fun and this is the things I like to do so one of the parishes in North Louisiana right make a short film there shoot it there and get 75 grand if you win that's the kind of stuff that you have to do right. because it's like so i see this is the hustle part so i'm like oh wayne oh wayne's friends with him wait he's from the blind side wait oh my god let's do a movie about two i don't know hillbillies in the swamp and north you know who like all whatever yeah. and that's the hustle of it that's the heart of it and you have to like Take ideas like that and run with it. I can't say that enough. I feel like I've been doing that since I left at 16. So even though I've, I've directed for this network, I've, done, I've worked with this, it doesn't matter. Like at the core of it, it's like make something really great with people that you know. Pull yourself together with your resources, but make it good. I mean, it's like with all the technology these days, it drives me insane because 
anyone can take a picture, but not everyone can take a photograph. And when I was making films, boy, I was learning how to neg cut. When you're working with film and it's 80 cents a foot and it's like, you are really working with your DP and you're really working to like know the shot and working with the actor to get it right. And people flip out their iPhone and they, th you know, like, yeah, there's a lot of great artists, but like, you gotta, you gotta really almost put the phone away for a minute and like recenter yourself and like really remember what you're trying to make. And I'm, I'm talking like I'm assuming that most everybody here is like filmmakers, producers, like trying to wanting and getting stuff made. Um, so yeah, and then using that technology to make it skyrocket. But yeah, we are, we got to do that. That would be so, mu so much fun. And I've been collecting equipment for 20 years to do things like this. And that's another thing is learning. You know, I did most of the post-production on my last feature. I taught myself how to do sound design. During quarantine, we couldn't have, you know, when it first started, it was pretty awful. And I was on a farm in, in Folsom and I turned my barn into a post-production facility. And I taught myself, how to do sound design. I did all the, I should get, show you guys the trailer that I did because I went to Thailand and before the COVID hit and we shot there. And um, just to show you like what you can do with just like, you know, a passionate group of people and a little bit of crowdfunding, yeah. you know, it really goes like, you know, the passion there. So I want to get back to, that's why I came to Louisiana. We, we're making a we're making a fun short, man. Getting, have, getting yeah. back to it. Getting yeah, exactly. Oh, so typically, like, so you, you say crap, but is that is that how you fund most of your movies, or at least initial funds for? It? Yeah, yeah. So, like, the five million dollar movie that I did had two um, equity investors, and then the rest we did crowdfunding. Um, the documentary I did was full crowdfunding on GoFundMe and Kickstarter. And then the last movie I did was, it had three investors, and then we did like 250,000 on, on crowdfunding. Like, I've never done that before, so. The crowdfunding? Uh, yeah. Have you done the crowdfunding? It's really, I mean, once you get a really great like representation of the piece, like a good trailer, like it really speaks volumes. Because yeah. I mean, that's one you don't have to pay. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I either use a studio or investors. Always. Yeah. yeah, and it's really stressful just like having made movies with investors. Like, I don't even like to borrow a dollar from someone, yeah. and yeah. they come in knowing it's a high risk investment. And they sign, I mean, that contract we signed, it was like 20 pages. But I still, I mean, I've luckily, knock on wood, sold three out of the four. I haven't released this last one and made money for people, but it's still like a lot of pressure because. Yeah. Especially independent, you know, people are putting a lot on the line. It's not like a studio that's like giving you like these yeah, people yeah. really. So yeah, I like crowdfunding as a way. How do you connect? Uh, or how did you music? Do you or your producer uh, connect with the composer or anything to the library? Um, okay, so the first the feature that I did here, um, the composer that I used was Klaus. His name was Klaus. Um, he, I had actually heard his score in Pirates of the Caribbean and like emailed him personally and was just like, I know my budget's only five million, but I have to have you, you're amazing. So I found him that way. And then like I just worked with a guy named Charlie Midnight as a music supervisor, um, cause I'm a very music heavy person. Like I, that's, it's so important to me cause I'm a musician. Um, but yeah, it's mainly that. And then I like to put out, once the movie's done, I put out on like social media and everything that I'm looking for music. So if there are any independent artists, like please send me stuff. Cause I like to use musicians that are trying to break in. Um, Cause I think it's, it's new, it's fresh. No one's hurt and it's like helping other artists. Um, but then I always like to, there's always that popular song I want, so I have to get like someone like Charlie Midnight to make a deal so I don't pay $5 million just for a song. Um, so yeah, I, li I do it that way. I'm a composer who relocated from uh, New York City. A New York composer, I like it. I love to work with composers. Both? You said New York or Europe? Both. 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 Oh, okay. I thought I heard Europe, Europe, and then she said New York. That's all.
Yeah. Wow, you know, even before COVID distribution was a nightmare, and now with COVID, it's everything streaming, everything is like selling off to Amazon or Netflix. Um, you know, I, what I would like to do, I actually had, I, I like making movies to then be in the theater with people and experience it with them. I don't want to just like sell my films off and then have them just stream in people's living rooms. So like I came up with this thing that I wanted to do on my last film is uh, the film is called Lost in Time and it's uh, it, it's a lot about what the title is, but I really wanted to have the premiere to drive in. And I think that as independent filmmakers, I think that we need to be like we are going to have to be more on the forefront of distribution and coming up with what normally you would pay 10 gram to a publicist to come up with like strategizing ideas of how to make it different how to stand out i still do believe in some film festivals but like it, you know seeing what it did with covid like even the festivals we were seeing like just streaming even now like we're voting the academy stuff and I used to get screeners from the Directors Guild, you know, of being able to watch. Now it's just I have to go digital and like have a screener passport and watch everything on my computer. And so, yeah, I think that it's it's going in the way of streaming. But I, like for me as a filmmaker, I don't I, I know that it makes money that way. But like I really want to try to do some other creative things and be more involved with doing that. Yeah, because it's have you met John Schneider? No. I'll hook you up with him. But he's got a circuit now of uh, all these drive-in movie theaters. And he has our films, uh, Stand On It and uh, Poker Run and Christmas Cards that he's doing, uh, playing them around. And he was doing it since COVID. I love it. So I'll introduce you to John. Yeah, I, I, the idea that I came up with was there's the old highway um, that starts in Florida, and it's the one. And it goes all the way up to Maine. So when we were in quarantine, I was like, huh, how many drive-ins are on the one? And I found 15 of them. So I, the first film that I ever did, I traveled the whole world. Like I went everywhere with it for six months and got to like be there with people. And I was like, I think I'll tour, I'll do the one and go like on my, like how musicians did it old school, like just tour with it and do drive-ins. And like, There's one in Holden right now. I love it. John Schneider yeah. I think it's a great way to like think outside. I think everything about this industry is always evolving and we have to think outside the box because some of us maybe aren't into like the direction in which COVID is forcing it or other people are forcing it because it's boring to me. I'm like, it's such a collaborative process. I don't want to sit in my, you know, and binge watch Netflix shows all day. Like it's just so not interesting to me. Um, Yes, yeah, just to get, yeah. Um. Yeah, that's what John's doing with his movies. Cause, so I rent a little piece of John's land. I've, I've got my studio there, but he, we've got a drive-in movie theater out there, and then he takes it on the road. But he's, he, I mean, he does, like, a concert, he does uh, a, race, dirt, a dirt race. track race. Yeah. We, we've got Love a it. huge, massive blow-up screen. He brings with them on the road. People that come yeah, out but, like, play. something like that. I mean, like, so his, his movies are way different than my movies, mm -hmm. so... Are, or people are way different, but something like that would be freaking really cool. To, like, oh, yeah. And goes on the road with, the, you know, something else, and it could be like a little miniature face. Oh, yeah. And they do that. That's so awesome. And bring in local talents. Yeah. Local talents. Well, we were going to have the um, the girl that sings our main theme. We were going to have her perform it while it was going. And, wow. and But uh, have you heard of in Mississippi, the Shack Up Inn? It's, oh, my God, it's a, it's the best place. Like 50 bucks a night, and it's like 30 like shacks from the 1800s and they've turned it into this kind of like oh and they do live music and so i'd love to s think of maybe having like a, a screening there and i just think that the way yeah we i think that thinking about how you're gonna it's almost like pre-production has become adding distribution to it of like okay what 
plans do we have for the child after she, how are we going to yeah. clothe her? How are we yeah. like when she's out in the world? Because, you know, it used to, it, there used to be a very like detailed, like same formula for you make the movie, you go to a film festival, a studio picks it up, bam. And now it's like none of that. Welcome to the 18. <laughs> right in the heart of Vanderbilt, Louisiana. It's so bohemic, it's so cool. And it's a theater, it's an old theater that we're putting, it's, it, you'll, you'll, it'll blow you away. You oh know, my God, that sounds amazing. It, it's a screening room. Oh my God, that sounds great. Yeah, I have a question. Oh, see, I'm an artist, a uh, metal artist, architect, uh, and um, mechanical engineer is my kind of degree. I started my own business back about 15 years ago. And uh, I've done a lot of cool stuff over the last a decade, but what I wanted to do is kind of transform out of being a solo slavist, you know, doing my own thing, and and get into this industry. I mean, I think it's very cool and exciting, um, but I have no idea. I mean, I, I live like right around the corner, so I came to this and here's all you guys talking about all this cool stuff. What do you have a suggestion? I mean, I'm a computer modeler. Uh, I run CNC equipment, and I'm, uh, I've got some really nice, awesome stuff in my shop, and I can build anything that I can imagine. Uh, it's just kind of a gift. So, I'm gonna need your number. Yeah, my, my, my real talent, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a, kind of a freak of the 3D computer model world, but then I go That's into cool. my shop and I physically build what it is that I design. Um, but it's like metal or, yeah. Things in the computer that they need to show on the background. Or create a movie around something like that. I think you just, I mean, you just had your answer kind of like presented to you. Yeah, it's like, yes, no, it's perfect. Cause you, I was going to say, well, number one, you have to put yourself out there. You just did and look at the feedback that you got. And also like, I, it's, when you look at a movie, what, what do you want to do? Like what inspires you? What, what part of it do you like? Well, so I, I like, I've, I've got this thing, I'm, Every time I watch a movie, I think about what's going on to make this scene, and um, and I uh, I can imagine building anything, uh, whether it's um, the, the mechanics to flip a bus or um, the the beautiful art that's got a, a amazing scene, like in that that scene in Iron Man where he's got this little thing that's you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's flipping. Mm -hmm. That little thing, it's a badass little magnetic thing. I create that kind of stuff. And it got so much attention. It got like, I don't know, 35 seconds of just annoying him, you know, in the scene. I thought that was so neat. But um, from anything from building stuff that's in a scene to building the, the thing that makes the scene. So we need to find you the right production designer. Like who's who who is like doing those kind of movies and like that's and I think that that's your first thing is like really asking and anyone who's in the in the industry and working like what does this person do so I build this what and knowing how like the art department works for instance like a production designer an art director a prop builder like so that you know where you would fit in and go from there because if you have samples of what you've built and they're as cool as you say all you need is to send someone like me a 25 second like video of it that's kick ass and how do you how do i say no if that's like what i'm looking for so so definitely just like Everything is a, it seems like a, and I, I don't necessarily like it, but I, I do it, the TikTok, Twitter speed. Like, people have, like, this brain span of, like, 20 seconds most, probably six seconds. So, like, condense something that's cool and just, like, be able to, like, shoot, and they can't say no because it's so, like, different. Because it sounds like you're different. That too. I mean, if you can, even if it's. Even if it's starting out PA, that way you can make a connection with a few people. Right. And that, I mean, that may be a way just to make a connection oh, yeah. with some art department people. But hey, yo, this is what I Extra do. work. I can't say enough how much. I mean, 120 bucks a day to just sit there and observe a set. I mean, what more can you ask for? <laughs> Go to meetup groups. We have meetup groups the first Tuesday of every every month. Okay. Where, and where is that at? I'll tell you more right now. We're, we're doing it at John Schneider Studios. Okay. Um, but because of COVID, we've been doing it like three months. Uh, but it used to be every every 
month. Okay. Uh, first Tuesday of every month. And use, I, use um, this is what I use to get my independent gigs, staffmeup.com. They basically staff every TV production, like the three, the National Geographic, History Channel, um, what else did I do? Like Night Watch. That's all based here. I got that from Staff Me Up. So like if just build a little, you know, resume and they are always like every every field they need. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Thank you.